camping tools here. Well, I've been asked to do a review, or rather not really a review, but a little video on different knife coatings and, um, yeah, my understanding of that. So here I've got a range of knives. Uh, by the way, these are all the same steel with the exception of this particular one here. So all of these, with the exception of this uh, N690, that's the Cobalt Martin Citic Stainless Steel from Bowler two here are uncoated and they have what's been applied to them it's not really a coating at all they're uncoated they have a stone wash finish if you hold the blade uh, and try to reflect it in the sun it's a sort of a semi mat you can see like scratch marks all over it from a rough relatively rough abrasion <laughs> abrasive finish on it so uh, while it's just a native uh, steel surface it's a little bit matte in finish this one here has had a higher grade abrasive on it you can't see so many scratch marks uh in in, in the blade itself there so these are untreated essentially then we move on to um what's called a mil spec finish a military standard specification this is a, in this case this is a black there are many kinds of military standard specifications but in this case this is a black oxide coating uh on there and it has a very matte finish as you can see, they're non-reflective whatsoever. Uh, this one here has a Cerakote finish on it. Cerakote, for those of you who don't know, is a, a polymer ceramic composition. It seems very popular these days. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Okay, so this particular model here, this one is uh, not N690. This is not a stainless per se. This is uh, a German uh, steel. This is PGK steel. And according to the manufacturer of this uh, knife, this is a Kisler knife, they say this has this tack wash finish on there. This is a proprietary finish on this particular blade. And you can see it's sort of semi-non-reflective. It has this gray appearance. They say it seals the blade and, and makes the blade less, you know, scratches less visible on it. It does, to me, look like some some sort of coatings on there, but it's impossible to tell because it's a, as I said, they say it's a proprietary thing. There's no information on that, but that does look uh, slightly different. Uh, the last example here uh, is a PTFE coating, uh, and it's known, which is Teflon, and it's known in the industry as Hydro Glider, because this is quite old. Out of all these uh, knives here, this is the oldest one. This is about 12 years old now, and it's worn quite heavily here. This has slightly a, a very smooth finish to it and, it and it looks just like a coating that you would find on a non-stick, on some non-stick cooking ware. You know, there's some concern uh, I, I've read on and off about people worried about ingesting particles from coated blades uh, and whether or not it's food safe. Well, all I can say for that is, you know, you've got to make up your own minds what's food safe and what's not. All I will do is tell you that, you know, obviously knives in the cooking industry, in the food preparation industry, they are uncoated. They're just stainless steel blades. All right. And do you see any difference between a Cerakote and a um, metal oxide uh, formed coating on the outside? Well, first of all, uh, the generally metal oxide coatings do not provide any real corrosion resistivity uh, there to the knife blade. This is mainly due, in this case, because this is a military-based knife intended for the military, you want a matte uh, finish, a non-reflective matte finish, which is generally fairly hard-wearing. It's a, it's a cheap process to do this. Uh, yeah, and it's fairly hard-wearing. And this particular knife is seven years old now, and I'll just turn it over so you can see what it looks like on both sides. It's fairly heavily used. Uh, we're at, you know, a little bit of wear here. Yeah, and it's fairly heavily used, but it still basically has a matte finish to it. This one here is uh, not seven years old. It's been used a lot, uh, and it's pretty wear resistant. It's starting to wear a little bit there. Uh, yeah, but it's and I've struck a fire steel against it here. You can see it's it's worn the edge there on that, but it's pretty tough. The Teflon's worn quite heavily, but then this this product is the oldest here, and I found this to be quite uh, resistant to abrasion and this actual coating does allow the knife uh, some benefits because this had a saw back on it and I think you know for sawing artificial materials dry artificial materials uh, this does enable um, 
the sword to move backwards and forwards with the mature of less friction. I have no doubt to that, no doubt about that whatsoever. So this is quite functional having this coating on there or when it was on there, that's for sure. Two more blade coatings I want to talk about. I've just added uh, these two knives to the list here. And this is a standard, uh, what's known as a powder coating. This is a very much stand, industry standard way of coating um, non-stainless steel materials. It's done all the time in industry. You can have a, a, varying, a great variety of different colors. Uh, this is my trusty Ontario Spec Plus. It's 1095. Uh, high carbon steel you can see most of the coating is worn off but when it was on there it had it's sort of this powder coating bore a bit of a resemblance to this teflon coating on here but it's not teflon on there it's pretty tough wearing but um nowhere near as tough as this uh this old this knife is very old now it's over 20 years old it's been used extensively you know all around the world in uh, and it's got a bit of rust surface, you know, just a little bit of surface rust on there, but it's been a very trusty blade. But you can't expect powder coating to last a very long time whatsoever by the nature of how it's placed. It's literally a paint, really a baked on paint. Now, the other kind of coating, uh, which is very popular uh, on various different knives today and cutting instruments is this what's called is a PVD which stands for physical vapor deposition this coating is applied in a vacuum and it's basically put on there on a molecular basis by uh, making the knife or the, or the metal a target and you apply uh, various different materials uh, which are sort of like Titanium nitride is one of them. This one here is a diamond-like carbon, a DLC PVD uh, on there, and it's really hard wearing. It gives a matte finish again on, on the blade and very, very, very hard wearing. There's some evidence that it can also provide um, less resistance to, uh, has a smoother finish. It has quite a smooth finish just by touching it. You can feel that and, and less resistance when moving through objects. So this is obviously a small Golic and and um, you can see some scratches up there but yeah I would say this is quite old now this knife and it's really really hard wearing the DLC eating as I said before untreated blades like this stone wash um, uh, and, and the other one that I showed you before I don't have a problem with cutting up food with and that this one you know I'm cautious now because there's all this powder coating coming off the blade you know so there's not on the actual edge there itself uh, I don't use this uh, knife that much these days because I've been working around the water for a long time in wet environments and so it's rusts up a lot so I have to you know I have to a lot of maintenance on this uh, but yes I don't like using that on there I don't have personally I don't have a problem with these things uh, with the different uh, coatings on here for, for cutting up food because you know like I'm not preparing a thousand meals and chopping up thousands of things and you know so it doesn't worry me, but I do want to mention this one, the Cerakote. A long time ago, uh, when was that, you know, like maybe in five years ago, I was asked, is Cerakote food safe? So I'm just going to read you something which I wrote in a blog, you know, maybe you never read the blog, it's okay. Then uh, this is what I wrote. Cerakote is the trade name of CerakoteHighTemperature.com. Uh, this is a popular ceramic based polymer composite used to coat the surfaces of many metallic objects such as guns, knives, car exhaust systems. High and it's it's useful in high temperature applications. I think it's good up to about 600 degrees Celsius. The base unpolymerized compounds, some of which uh, are listed as trade secrets even today. Nobody knows what these things are and the names and data are unavailable, are toxic if handled incorrectly and I will provide the links to the SDS data sheets. So I did that. I wrote these links to the SDS data sheets provided by them where they talk about the toxicity of the compounds and they do use in Cerakotes uh, some carbon black materials which are known to be uh, carcinogenic. Uh, Okay, so all of these things have to be taken with a bit of a grain of salt because they have to provide this data if you use these things incorrectly, that is. Okay, so I wrote to Cerakote Ceramic Coatings and asked them to comment on whether the polymerized compounds, not the unpolymerized, because you would never come across that unless you're actually involved in coating uh, these products, whether the 
polymerized compounds, that is the final problem uh, products, have any health and safety information on those? And uh, could, could you supply that? They never replied. So that was five years ago. If you're concerned about uh, whether or not any knife coating could be you know, hazardous to ingest uh, when preparing food, it's better off just not getting knives that are coated. That's all I can say. You can read the uh, MSDS sheets of the various different materials, for example, such as Cerakote. Um, you know, if you're not uh, into LD50s and acute toxicities, etc., um, and what all that nomenclature means, you know, there's a lot of jargon there. If you're unfamiliar, that will mean nothing to you. Uh, basically, you know, these MSDS sheets are there for operators, the people that are actually applying the Cerakote, that they should read this stuff so they take all necessary safety precautions and uh, they don't poison themselves um, preparing these finishes. For the end user, it's a little bit of a different thing. It's a bit more murky, actually, because... Um, there's probably not much data whatsoever on uh, what happens when, you know, these cube materials are ingested. So, you know, better off, um, you know, the easiest thing in this case, unless you're expert in that area, you know, um, the easiest thing is to avoid knife coatings if that's the sort of thing that worries you.